You're listening to The Building Code. I'm Tom Houghton. I'm Paul Worth. We're going to bring our guests, Joe and Andy, from Legend Homes on in just one second. But first, I want to tell you about an exciting opportunity we have called Builder Trend University On The Road. We're calling it BTU On The Road for short. This will be taking place in Dallas, Texas on October 3rd, 2019. It's a one-day event for you and your team to learn more and how to optimize your usage of Builder Trend. We have a limited time early bird discount available right now. So if you go to the website, buildertrendu.com slash Dallas, you'll see the limited time pricing there. Depending on when you're listening to this episode, it might already be gone. So as soon as you listen to it, go check it out. You're actually going to hear from Andy and Joe share their Build a Trend University experience at the end of the episode. So make sure you listen all the way to the end to hear their thoughts and their takeaways from Build a Trend University. Now let's get started with Joe and Andy. And joining us on this episode, we're chatting with two individuals from Legend Homes, Andy Ferguson, Vice President, and Joe Kreider. He's a division manager there. They're based out of uh, the greater Nashville area. How you doing, guys? Doing great, thanks. Appreciate you having us on. Yeah, Hello, good gentlemen. To good to have you. Uh, we talked a couple weeks back at Builder Trend University. We talk about that a lot on the podcast, but that's where we meet a lot of our clients, which is why we love doing it uh, here in Omaha. So at the end of the show, we'll talk to you. Well, maybe we'll ask you fun facts about uh, your trip to Omaha. Yeah. But um, we were talking. You guys have a great story. So we thought it'd be really cool to bring you on. And um, as we talked about uh, when we were discussing the podcast, I think our listeners love hearing about fellow companies, uh, how they started, what you know, some challenges they face today, some wins they have, stuff like that. So we always ask for sort of a company profile. Do you, do you want to give us a rundown? Yeah, so our company is uh, Legend Homes. Um, we have about 15 employees. We'll build probably about 25 homes this year um, with about a $30 million uh, volume. Um, we've been in business since 2006. Back in 2006, there was a couple of us, and we've just been growing steadily ever since. So 2006, that's, that's when we started as a business. So about a year and a half or two two years later, uh, a huge boom in building happened, right? Or the uh, opposite of that? Yeah, not <laughs> not, not, not quite the best. We had a, a huge boom in remodeling about that time. Yeah, that's there smart. There you go. So a lot of people pivoted. Yeah, that's that's really we, smart. So is that how you guys survived? That's where we, yeah, we honed our skills in, the, in pretty much anything people would pay for, we did. Mm -hmm. Sure. So what was that time like for you guys? I mean, 2006... You build your business based on building new homes. There's some concept of like, here's our process. Here's how we're going to go design this stuff. Here's how we're going to sell it. Here's how we're going to produce it. And then everything just changes. Yeah. And for us, it really, it wasn't, I mean, it was a terrible time for our industry. For us, it wasn't that bad only because we didn't, we didn't own a bunch of lots at the time. So we were just starting out. We weren't carrying a bunch of baggage. It really helped us own what we do. Um, and, you know, at the time, we to be successful and to survive, you just had to be really good. There were still a few people building and a few people buying homes, and we just had to be very good to attract those folks. So you guys were lean enough, and that's very similar to our story at Builder Trend. I think when the when that happened, there was only five or six of us here, so we hunkered down and just kind of got through it and learned a bunch of lessons, and then um, we're better for it today. So that's good to hear. Do you still remodel today, or are you laser focused on home building? We do not do much remodeling. We'll do it occasionally for, for clients, but, but generally speaking, uh, we, we just do custom homes. And so is that pre-sold custom homes or are you doing specs as well? So we'll do about 60% pre-sold homes and 40% specs. Really our, our bread and butter is the, the pre-sold homes. Um, it's, it's really who we built our staff around and, and kind of all of our all of our, our people, our project managers, our designers, that whole staff is built around that customer experience and, and building custom homes. Well, let's talk about that. So what was your vision for building a staff? Because a home builder, I think, can go a lot of different routes. Obviously, bringing on employee, full-time employees is a, is, is a big overhead, right, with everything that goes with it. Some people like have their salespeople be the real estate agents. Some people have, uh, outsource designing. Some people outsource uh, architecture. I meant interior designing. So did you guys have a plan and what does it look like today in terms of staff? It's a great question. I think our business and, and working with clients, it's such a, an intimate process, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll work with clients for 
well over a year from the, the pre-construction phase through construction to after construction. And so all of our staff are very good communicators, great people, people, persons, um, and just really good at working with clients. And that's, that's our, our main focus is just making that experience very good. And so we've, we've hired and we've built our staff based on folks that can, can help us pull that off. Mm-hmm. And so, we, so go ahead, Joe. So we've recently brought on a, a lot of um, folks that maybe don't have any building background, and, but they're just really excellent communicators. They're college athletes. I mean, it's a similar mold that you guys pull that work there at Builder Trends. You know, it's the same people that have the intangible skills that you can't teach because, you know, what we do every day is, is pretty easily taught. It takes a little bit of time, um, but, you know, those, the, the communication is really probably the hardest thing that we do on, on any day. And this is, that's really where Builder Trend helps out or is helping out a lot of starting to implement. That's a great nugget to take out of this episode is that, and do you think that's a trend happening in construction? Or do you feel like that's still pretty unique to take people outside of construction and just plug them into your systems because they're good communicators, and understand business, that kind of thing? I mean, I think I think there's really two types of construction businesses out there, especially in the residential. There's the guy in his pickup truck who runs his whole business out of his house, and then you know, not that we're more professional, but it's just a different type of profession where we're taking you know um, young college educated folks without a lot of building experience but understand the technology, understand how to leverage technology uh, to make us you know, more competitive than the next guy. That's awesome. I think that's the future of home building right there. You know, leveraging technology, I mean, it's integrated into so many other parts of our lives, it just makes sense that we're using it to do this as well. Well, and there's a skilled labor shortage, right? Yeah. So like at a certain point, you need to make a you may need to make a shift from trying to have in-house labor and that be your hiring to just somebody who understands technology and business and communication and just apply your process, right? Yeah. I love your tagline on your website. It says building a luxury home should be a luxury experience. I like Ooh. that cuz it it that right? Isn't that That's good? That's good. That's well done, guys. Yeah. We'll put, we'll make sure you put yeah. a link to your uh, website in the show notes page uh, yeah. so other people can check it out, but Where'd you get the tagline? The tagline. Yeah. Or the tagline. Yeah, I think it really comes back to just what we what we do every day in terms of just making it a making it a great experience. Um, that gets back to what we were just talking about as far as hiring great communicators. You know, we our, our clients are all really successful. So our clients are are our CEOs, their doctors, whatever they do, they are extremely professional in their field, and they're used to having. Uh, really great experiences wherever they go, whether it's restaurants or buying a car or whatever they do and whatever they consume, they're used to that being a great experience. And so our, our approach in our business is to make what generally people will come to us and they'll assume that building a home is going to be a terrible experience mm-hmm. because they've, they've heard that time and time again from friends or, or maybe they've actually had that experience in the past. And so they, they come to us most of the time assuming it's going to be a terrible experience. I think by kind of our processes, by our people, we're just trying to make it make it fun, make it enjoyable, and make it extremely easy for our clients. Yeah, just, just to illustrate that a little bit, a couple of weeks ago, I was finishing a house for a client, and she asked me, she said, well, have you started another house yet? And I thought, man, what a great compliment. She thinks that I am only building one house. Literally, does she realize I'm involved in 12 other projects. But for her to think that, you know, I, my only responsibility is to build her custom home, I mean, that, and, and I'm not the only one who does that. We, our whole team makes our clients feel that way. Uh, I think that's really what is a luxury experience. Is, is like that exemplifies it there. That's a great point. That's incredible. Yeah. Making them feel like that is super unique. That's really great. That is. I want to go back to one thing before Tom moves on because he's going to make me move on. You, you have a long sales cycle, as it were. Right? You meet with somebody, you guys do design. Yeah. A very hot topic in the industry right now is charging for design. When and how do we charge for estimates? How do we charge for design? What is your take on that? What's your process? You know, um, one thing I guess we have the luxury of is we're not we're not bidding against other competitors a lot. We generally, when a client comes to us, they've usually been in some of our homes or they, they know of us. When they come to us, we pretty quickly get some type of architectural deposit or construction services agreement to say, hey guys, we're gonna do this work for you. We're going, to, we're going to walk you through the process of designing a home. We're going to spend time with you to help develop construction specs. 
we're going to work with you to develop a site plan and we're going to essentially build this package with you and it's going to cost maybe it's ten thousand dollars or fifteen thousand dollars but there's a fee associated with it if at the end of the day when we deliver pricing to them if, if they say hey this isn't going to work out no problem the deposit would be non-refundable assuming that we go to contract we then apply that deposit towards the contract price and if you do that how many homes do you guys build a year for for pre-sold probably uh so pre-sold let's say 15. okay so let's say you present a prospect with that just round number ten thousand dollar deposit a hundred times a year how many people just walk away because of the deposit i would say ten percent and that's probably a healthy ten percent right because they probably aren't that serious Sure. And, and part of that process is really understanding expectations on the front end mm -hmm. before we ever even put a bunch of work into it. It's really understanding, okay, you know, what, what you, what, what you, the client may be describing, we think is going to be in this price range. Does that, does that feel okay? Are we, are we talking about the same thing? And so really understanding and having realistic expectations versus putting a lot of time and effort on, on everybody's part only to find out in a few months that, Hey, we're thinking two totally different things. It's that qualification we talk about, which is super important in construction. Yeah. Just so you're not yeah. spinning your wheels on everybody. Yeah. And particularly if someone says, Hey, we've got a budget of X, we'll steer them to a particular area. Got it. Yeah. I've seen some Nashville homes on a, on a, on a TV show. My wife, not me watches keeping it Cavallari <laughs> with what is that? Jay Cutler and Christine Come on, Cutler. Oh, oh it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Just, just don't tell anybody, but I kind of do like that show. <laughs> um, but those are some monster houses, like when they drive around. It's a beautiful area it's down there. It's a beautiful there. area. So my wife just told me, uh, I, it was all over the news here, that they just moved. I've never seen the show, but they actually just moved into a neighborhood where I originally met Andy, and I was working for another builder at the time. This was, you know, 10 years ago. Um, but that is one of the neighborhoods that Legends built a bunch of homes in. I built a bunch of homes in, and... We're building in, I mean, four or five other communities just like that at the same scale and magnitude. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty impressive market here. For it sure. really is, yeah. I was just down in actually in Franklin earlier this year. And uh, I mean, I, I thought it was beautiful even for, I was down there at the end of January. And of course, in Omaha in January, it looks horrible outside, but Franklin still looked beautiful. So we actually live in franklin i mean our, our the bulk of our business is really south of nashville and brentwood and franklin um so it's kind of it's really where we operate most of the time is in that area so beautiful let's uh let's peel back the curtain and talk about kind of your business and the processes that you had in place a couple of years ago and how that's evolved if you don't mind could you give us like kind of a snapshot of how things are running maybe about four or five years ago sure and even uh even nine months ago, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it would be uh, it'd be pretty comical if you saw how we operate, which I consider to be a great business. It was in, a, in large part due to uh, three ring, lots of three ring binders and lots of various Excel spreadsheets and uh, all kinds of various programs that were not linked together, whether it's paper copies and binders of estimates and bids or a purchase order system based on an Excel spreadsheet or design selections all plugged into a three ring binder. So generally our systems were very antiquated and paper based. I mean, yeah, just, just in, I guess up until several months ago when we really started to use builder trend, like if you wanted to double check to make sure that you had the final information the only, on the selection, the only way to really do that was to call the office or drive to the office, pull out the binder and double and look at it. Wow. It's just it's hard to believe that we were, we were doing that. And so when you guys talk about bringing in young professionals and when they walk into an office and see that maybe this antiquated system, what was their reaction to that? Were they pushing you guys to like, really, isn't there kind of a better way to do this? I guess maybe when I joined, I, I think kind it was, of saw I think, that. I think, Joe was, Joe, I think Joe was shocked when he joined the team about a year ago. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I have a pretty extensive background in operations and I did home building. I, I went joined the military. I was in the Marine Corps for six years and I came back to Nashville and ended up linking back up with Andy. And I just, you know, felt like there would be a much better way to do this. And that's where we kind of got back into builder trend. And I think to answer your question though, Paul, like, when we brought on all these these new folks, we also realized that we didn't really have a good system to train them. 
And we didn't really have anything that we could hand over to them and say, here's our process and here's how you should manage a project. And so now with Builder Trend, you know, especially using templates and having kind of schedules laid out, I could take somebody right off the street tomorrow and we would have a much better implementation plan for somebody with no construction experience or somebody with a lot of a construction experience. You know, every builder does things differently. Um, so we're, we're kind of now using Builder Trend to help codify the way that we do business. It's just kind of been institutional knowledge up until now. That's a big benefit that we probably don't do a good job of speaking to in a sales process just because there's so much we're trying to cover. But I think it's something people realize is that, you know, instead of Andy having to like, or Joe, you having to like, just kind of like download out of your head for four months. This is how we do this. This is how we do this. It's just like, everything's done in here and it's labeled change orders. Right. And there's a manual and there's like a video. So check it out. Well, and Paul, I think you you hit the nail on the head. What, what it's really become eye opening for us is we now have the potential to grow a whole lot easier. And so you know, back doing this older system that we've been doing, it was almost like additional growth just seemed impossible because it would involve teaching new people this very cumbersome, these very cumbersome processes that it, it looked to be like we just had maxed out our growth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and once we've changed, it's been very eye opening as we start to implement various parts and pieces of builder trends to see that growth is going to be easy at this point. That's awesome. Yeah. Producer Brooke just showed us a photo. I don't know if you guys are okay with us sharing this on the show notes, but there's a photo of a whole bunch of binders. I think maybe you guys see it. (laughs) So yeah, we'll post that on the show notes if you guys are okay with it. We'll caption that before Builder. It's okay. We're we're embarrassed, but yeah, you can show it. Yeah. Well, Well, I think, I think a lot of people will relate to it. The reality is, is that today, 80% of the market is still there. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, what we always preach to people is like, we're not here to judge. We're not here to be somebody who says you're doing something wrong or even that your systems are antiquated. The, the, the adjective I was thinking about is like, they're just, they're customized to how you guys do things. And it's hard to teach yeah. somebody like your custom workflow and like your, the way you guys do it. And everybody can get better. Our company can get better every day. So it's starting to become very obvious to building yeah. construction companies. Like there is a better way to do this. It doesn't take that much. It doesn't cost that much. And like your savings are out of the window or crazy. It's, yeah. a bad, Maybe not out of the window. Out of the window? Well, mm. Out of control? Out of control. Out there? <laughs> I don't know. VP of sales here, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the cool thing is if, if you do look at the photo of all the various notebooks, you know, we're not really doing anything different when we're operating out of Builder Trends. We're still we're still using a PO system. We're still categorizing all of our selections. We're still scheduling. We were just doing it in a much different way with 15 different systems. We're now able to just put it all into one program. So, um, yeah, I, I think one thing about Builder Trend when we first started is you know you you guys have selections and, and all these really awesome tabs. I, my first kind of thought was, okay, this is how they intend for this to work and that to work. But after going to BTU, what I really realized was it's really adaptable to the way that you run your business. And there's no, you guys don't have a, or I have to build you guys, Builder Trend doesn't have a specific workflow that you have to follow to be able to use the system. Whatever workflow that you develop uh, is, is really how you should use Builder Trend. And, and I think that's not, you don't really know that until you get in there and start using it. Yeah, that's a great point, Joe. And quite honestly, it's an internal struggle we've had for a long time of, do we create the workflow and make a new company change their workflow and like, this is the way we do it? Or do we keep it super flexible and know that if we don't talk to them and explain that it's super flexible, we might lose some people there. So it it is an internal struggle for us to always think about like, what is the right way? I don't think there is a right way because there's advantages to both. Um, some people do come to us for our consultive, Hey, you guys obviously know what you're doing because you work with 15,000 companies like me and we, you've been doing it for 13 years. So you tell me how to run selections. And there's other people who come to us and go, Hey, we're comfortable with our process. Just, just adapt that process to your software. Cause everybody here knows how to do selections our way. I mean, it, it seems like the system now works for either path. Um, right. True enough. Yeah. I think the thing for us too is, you know, we built some really detailed customs and then we also built some spec homes that are at a lower price point that don't have as much that changes to them and so we we almost need 
like different processes for different projects because the client has an input and in, in how well the project can run. And, you know, we, we really need a framework, not an absolute system. We're, we're not a production builder. We, we can't build the exact same way every single time. And so for a company like us, Builder Trend does give us a lot of flexibility. And then, you know, I think, too, having met our coach, um, and he has really helped us say, hey, here's some other clients. This is how they do it. Um, and he's given us some really good ideas of how we could, you know, kind of update a process or make a process better by using Builder Trend. That's great. Can we give our coach a plug? Yeah, who is yeah. it? Can we give our Griffin Griffin Gum? Oh, Griffin. You know, you probably like him because he's from the the southeast as well. We did. We yeah. really related. <laughs> he, I don't. Know, I think he's from South Carolina. I think so. He 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 married North Carolina. North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah, he married into Omaha. I'm sure that's probably still a, a point of contention in their marriage after probably. the winter after the winter we yeah. just had. Yeah. Uh, but he's a great guy, so I'm glad. Yeah, give him a shout out. I had two things there though. So like the one misconception is templates are for are, are for production builders. The reality is is that templates just save you time because they're a framework, as you said, Joe, for the next home. Even though that home might be wildly different in the schedule or the actual selections or the actual details of the purchase order, you're still going to need framing and framing still going to need to come before drywall. Right. Yeah. And I mean, that's a great point because we, when we first started, we built this really detailed schedule and then we created a template. Well, we got to the next job and we had some unexpected delay and it just got so cumbersome. We deleted the schedule and started over. So what we made then was a 10 or 15 activity schedule. And then that is our template that every job follows. Just like you said, you know, framing comes before insulation, insulation comes before drywall. And then we use the schedule as the, the project manager in the field update. You know, we, I sit down, we review two week schedules. We solidify what's happening for two, two to four weeks. And then that's where we really get in and manipulate the system and make it work for the individual project. Yeah, that's great advice because I think there is some misconception there. And so that's uh, another good nugget from this one for everybody. Tom's probably going to make me have to stay on schedule. What's next, Tom? <laughs> no, it's, this is all good. And I was thinking like from, from an outside perspective, I think a lot of clients will relate to where you guys were at, which was you were using the software, but you weren't leveraging it to its maximum capabilities. So what was the changing point for you guys that said we've got to do something and then i guess now if you can fast forward so this is a two-part question sorry but tell us you know what was the crux of you saying we got to make a change and leverage this more and then where are you at now well i so i mean a lot of it just kind of came about when i when i started i think when they handed me a here's here's how we do our schedules and it was a paper schedule and here's where all your selections are and it was a binder this thick full of printed copies that had multiple stamped finals on it, and I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing in the field. We just realized that, you know, there's, there's got to be another way to do this, yeah. and there has to be a technology to do it. And we, we did have um, an account. We were using Co-Construct, and one of, the, one of the downsides was is that it wasn't functional from a mobile phone. And so I would say of the 15 people that are in our company, four or five are at the office every day, and the rest of us, myself included, come to the office maybe once a week um, because we can all do we do everything, you know, remotely. And so for, for Builder Trend, when, when we kind of re-signed back up, it was really about the functionality of the mobile app. You know, if, I, if I'm going to ask or we're going to ask our team to do stuff and update it on a day-to-day -day basis from the field, they have to be able to do it from the iPhone. Mm -hmm. so to, to tell them to go back at night and pull out the computer and do all that stuff is just you know, now you might as well just do paper. You're, mm -hmm. It's just as difficult. Yeah, that makes sense. So how do you guys approach, how did you approach onboarding and then like teaching all of your people? Do you guys, did you two take the lead and sort of like, this is how build a trend works. Let me explain it to my guys and, and gals, or did you get everybody in a room and learn together? I think we started, I'll back up one thing. I, I think the other thing to, to dovetail on what Joe said is we also sat down, maybe it was nine months ago and just talked about, what were the bottlenecks in our company? Mm -hmm. And and as this as an overall theme was, you know, the, the building of the house, the actual physical construction really isn't that difficult. But what, what was really, we were struggling with in our business was just the processes of getting information to the guys building the houses. You know, how do they know they've got the right information? How do we, how can we help them schedule and just trying to improve our processes. So that's, that really pushes us towards, okay, if we want to eliminate some bottlenecks and improve processes, 
we really then went back and started looking real closely at builder trend. Yeah. But the, I think the first thing that was just looking back was the, the first thing we implemented was doing daily logs. And I think that's kind of a consistent theme, the mm-hmm. theme that we hear on, on the podcast and how guys can jump in. And I will say for me personally, the daily logs changed our business overnight. And just having that ability, for me, I'm in the office 90, 90% of the time, and I had no vision of what was going on in the field unless I got in the car and drove out to the site. And so, which led to really long hours, you know, you know, working on the weekends. And all of a sudden, with the guys doing daily logs, it really transformed the business. And all of a sudden, we had a tool to communicate from everybody in the field to everybody in the office. Um, and that started, the light bulb went off then that, okay, we're on to something big here as far as being able to just improve the communication across our entire team. Yeah, and I think just... I guess to answer your question, like, you know, about implementation, I mean, I would say that one, that's probably something that we could, we could do better. And, and we were kind of due for another kind of sit down, but I think the most important thing is, is just an incremental approach. So daily logs, pretty easy to pull up the app, take a picture, write a few notes, and then we'll kind of push out, Hey, start, start checking the weather uh, box on the daily log. And then it's like, Hey, start using this tag. Or, you know, we decided we want to be able to, um, I guess to do is another example. We, we've decided we're going to try to use to do to do a you know, to kind of hold a weekly production meeting. And some of it we're just kind of figuring out as we go. And then when we feel like we've got a process that works, we're kind of sitting down, you know, with whoever it most impacts because the folks that are issuing the POs aren't the same folks that are building the schedule. We don't, we haven't really spent as much time, you know, showing them all the, the process to build a PO. Right. There's like a concept of you don't have to teach everybody everything. There's there's like a role based concept of rolling out software and especially build a trend, right? Like get the people in there who need to know POs. Your guy in the field maybe doesn't need to do that unless he issues POs in the field or bills. But like he doesn't have to know how to develop them if he just needs to have be able to go look at which ones they are or approve work done by the drywall guy, right? Yeah, and I mean I think the other thing too is like you just get a couple of things implemented and all of a sudden everybody sees the value in it. And then they just quicker like, Oh, this is really cool. Now I, now I know where to go to find the information and the, the software is so intuitive that it doesn't take a lot of training. I mean, it's like watching my two year old pick up, you know, the phone and be able to, you know, stop and start his videos, you know, with, without ever having any training or really even know how to use it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's great for our UIX team. They, they continue to work on that ease of use. I think they always talk about like, if it's the first time you ever see it, we want it to be something you can do like two or three things with. Yeah. And we'll put UI UX definitions in the show notes for those of people who are not in the design. That's right. Product. Hey, update videos. Do you guys see Tom's recent update videos every month? No, I'm not. I'm not. Probably not. Oh my gosh. They're more people. Where do you find those in the system? So in the the help help center. So you go to the top right right of your app. uh, If you're on a desktop, click on the the question mark. Yep. Go to your help center. So Tom, every month does a really great video um, about all the new features we've done. And we also give us a sneak peek at features features that were coming coming soon. Yeah. That we're working on. So check out the upcoming recent updates, recent videos, updates videos. Yeah. and Tom is in a uh, Santa Claus hat at one point. <laughs> was that December? That was Agnog? probably December. Yeah. I mean, Hollywood, it was, it was, Holly, you're not getting a straight, uh, cut and dry video with Hollywood Tom. He's going to, he's going to put a spin on it. There you go. <laughs> They're entertaining. We'll cool. definitely check those out. Check them out. <laughs> okay. Thanks. So back on track. Let's talk about, let's, let's wrap up with your experience at Builder Trend University. What was your favorite class that you had here? You know, I'll jump in. I guess, uh, first off, on the experience, one, um, I would highly recommend it to anybody that's looking to get deeper into Builder Trend. I mean, we just had a, a fantastic experience. One of the, the biggest things was, was just meeting a lot of different people. Um, and I guess our best, our best class was really the time we spent with our coach was when we were really able to kind of take a deeper dive into things we talked about in classes and things we were thinking about. And we were blown away with uh, at least our coach's ability just to listen to what our problems or issues are and help us, you know, basically help us plug into Builder Trend and how Builder Trend can help us solve those problems. It's just very intuitive. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, so it's, I think the other thing for me really was it didn't feel like I was going to a paid conference where, um, they were there to take take our money. I mean, I, I literally felt like 
I was going in where there was a big group of people that are really vested interest in our success of not only our own business that we get the most out of the program. And I, unfortunately, I can't remember exactly who they were, but there were two questions that I had. One was like a little software glitch I was having and something else. And I talked to those folks on the first day. And then on the last day, they both came and found me and then gave me a response or a solution to what the problem was. And I, I didn't see them write anything down. I didn't see them take any notes. Um, but they really paid attention to what was going on and what our questions were. I mean, I think just because of that, it was a first-class experience. And I would definitely go by. Yeah, it was a very personal experience. I definitely walked away with the feeling of that just Builder Trend in general was much, much more than just a software. It really felt like a partner to our company that was really interested in helping us do better. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, that's really why we created Builderton University is that we wanted to break that wall down. Yeah. We didn't want to be the guys who uh, talk to you when they need your renewal and like, you know, hit you up for every like new upgrade and like that, that relationship. We, we talk internally all the time about being your non equity business partner. And this is a way for us to really, really display that. And it's a credit to our people here. Well, we, we felt that a hundred percent when we were there. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. And we have a bar. That helps too. And the bar, the bar was nice too. <laughs> yeah. The bar was nice too. Yeah. It kind of all works together. Yeah, it was good. Good. All right, guys. Well, let's wrap up. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today and kind of sharing your Builder Trend experience. I mean, we're so, so glad that you guys came up and joined us for Builder Trend University. I and mean, we wish you continued success in your business. And thanks for your time. Yeah, man. It's amazing that you guys are doing so well. And just for us to be a little, little part of it um, makes us feel really great. And, Let's keep uh, let's keep building together. Anything we can help you get to, whatever your goal it is, let's go to fifty million, hundred million, and then the moon. Yeah. Well, Paul, Paul, Tom, thanks. We appreciate it. And I, and I would say you, the builder trend's a lot bigger than a small part of our business now, particularly going forward over the next few years. So we're we're really excited, and we we appreciate you guys. All right, come back to Omaha. Yeah. Soon. Or we'll come yeah. visit you guys. Oh yeah, we'll be out there. Yeah. Yeah. Any any time. Yeah. All, All right. right. Appreciate you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Love what you heard? Don't forget to rate and subscribe to our podcast so you can hear from more guests that will benefit your business. Also, please check out our show notes page for more information on what we discussed on this episode. You can find it at buildertrend.com slash podcast. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on The Building Code. Appreciate you.